Uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part six of our first person controller series. In the last episode, we added Head Bob to our character, and in this video, we're going to be doing a lot of maths. I hate maths, but I'm going to hold your hand through it and try and make it as uh, unpainful, not painful, as possible. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be dealing with angled slopes inside of our game. So we'll get into that in just a second, but I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter, go check out his website, keep up to date with all the news of his upcoming projects. And I also want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. So let's take a look at exactly what I mean here. So inside of our character controller and the character controller object, we have something called a slope limit. And what that is, is the angle in degrees in which a slope can be so our player can climb it. And we have two slopes here. One is 45, so just on our limit, so we shouldn't be able to climb this one. And then this one is 30 degrees. So we'll start with that one. We can see our character can walk up no problem. But when we get to 45, we see we walk forward towards it, we can't get up. And that seems like it works fine. The problem is with Unity's character controller, it stops you climbing that limit, but it doesn't stop you jumping up that limit. So if we're already on there, we can get up. Now we can go down and up, but we shouldn't be able to do that. And we're also going to tackle the fact that Unity's character controller doesn't slide as well. So this angle is the same as that angle. This is a 45 degree angle. We shouldn't be able to walk along this. We should, in essence, hit this and slide down. But in the current controller, we can just walk down and we get stuck halfway. Well, not stuck, we can still move, but we can't go up. We can only walk down. And that may be fine for your game, but I'm going to add in an extra feature toggle to determine whether or not we should slide down slopes if we're beyond our slope limit. So let's open up our script and let's get on with it. So first thing, we'll add another feature toggle in here, and this one will be will slide on slopes. Next, inside of our movement parameters, we're going to want the speed in which we'll slide down those slopes. So slope speed, and by default, I'm going to set that to eight. Okay, so let's just come down here and underneath our head bob parameters, we're not going to actually have any public parameters apart from that speed, which is up there. So we don't actually need the header in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little comment in the top, just saying that these are the sliding parameters. And we're going to need one vector three, and we're going to need a Boolean property. So let's just add these in. A private vector three, and this is gonna be our hit point normal. And um, we'll come to that in just a second. But basically it's just gonna be the normal position of the surface that we're currently walking on. Think of it as kind of like the angle of the floor. Next, we're gonna add in our private bool is sliding. Like I said, this is gonna be a property, so we'll add in our curly brackets add in our get accessor, and then inside here is where we're gonna determine whether or not the player should be sliding. So let's start by checking if our character controller is grounded, because obviously if we're not grounded, we're never gonna to need to slide. Next, we're gonna do a raycast. This time, we're gonna raycast downwards, and we're gonna get the data of the floor that we're currently standing on. So let's do physics.raycast, we're going to do it from our transform.position, so the center point of our object. We're going to cast it vector three down as the direction. We're going to grab our raycast hit data by putting out raycast hit slope hit. And then we just want to limit that direction distance to be one. So first of all, we'll start with the else because that's going to be relatively straightforward compared to the other part of it. So if either the player isn't grounded or there is nothing underneath our player, so technically we're falling, so really we aren't grounded anyway, though, we're just going to return false. 
because we shouldn't be sliding if both of these or any of these are true. So what about if a ray cast actually hits an object? Well, we'll set our hit point normal equal to our slope hit dot normal. So like I said before, that's going to get sort of the angle value of the floor that we're currently standing on. And we want to interrogate the angle of that based on our character's slope limit. So we can just return out of here vector3.angle. So we're going to get the angle between our hit point normal and vector3.up. So how many degrees from direct vertical is the floor that we're currently standing on? And we're going to check if that value is greater than our character controller's slope limit that we've already set inside of the inspector. So now is sliding controls all the data we need to actually perform a slide if we need it. And the way that we can use that, when we're actually applying our final movements, we can override that move direction with the hit normal point direction if we need to slide. So we'll do another if statement in here. This will be, we'll slide on slopes. If we've got it set, so our character will slide and we are sliding, so that's going to fire off all that code that we've just written up here inside of our property. So if we should slide, and we are sliding, we're going to override move direction to be a new vector 3. We're going to pass in our hit point normal dot x, negative hit point normal dot y, because we want to slide downwards and not upwards. And then obviously hit point normal dot z. And then we'll multiply that vector 3 by our slope slide speed. And really, that should be that sliding completed. So now if we play our game, we should see this working. We jump up and it doesn't work. I've got a feeling why it doesn't work, but we're going to prove it before we test it. So my theory is this raycast isn't long enough and it's not actually hitting the ground when we're on a slope. So to test that, we can add in a debug.drawRay and then we'll just kind of mirror what our raycast is. So we'll start it at transform.position. We'll go in vector three down and we'll give it the color of red. So let's have a look what this looks like. We bring our game view out, and then let's just have a look inside of our scene view. We don't want to maximize. Okay, so we see a red, a little red uh, gizmo here, and it looks like it's just touching the floor, but when we're actually on a slope, it isn't long enough. Yep. Okay, so all we need to do, we can delete that now. I'm just going to increase that to two. So let's see if this works this time. So we do slide down, but it seems like it's quite jerky on the way down. It is. We don't want that. We want that to be smooth. So what's going on with that? Oh, I found out what I've done wrong, guys. Sorry about that. Instead of setting move direction equal to be this new vector 3, we want it to be plus equal. So we're going to add that down, downward slide momentum to our current momentum. This should work. This should result in a smooth slide. Well, there we go. So if we're trying to fight against it, we slide a lot slower, which is a little bit more realistic. And now if we come up here to this angle, we should slide straight down. And we do. And we can't walk back up and we can't jump back up. Perfect. And just like that, we can no longer bunny hop up slopes. So I hope that's been informative. I hope it was interesting. I know I don't like maths, but some of you might do. Now, in the next video, we're going to add something that isn't strictly realistic, but a couple of first-person controllers that I've seen do use it, and it does come in handy for quite a few games. And that's going to be adding the ability to zoom in and out as if either you're using binoculars or a lot of games that I've seen it use it as like a focus element to it. So we'll add that in next week. So I hope you tune in then. I'll see you again. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.